So here's my recently completed uh, Lego Mindstorms card shuffler. Um, this one I built to work for Blackjack games, so we've got set up to where it'll deal uh, one to six decks, uh, up to three decks a side, which presents some interesting challenges. So the first thing the program asks for is the deck count, one to two, three to four decks, or five to six decks, and you use the arrows up and down to select the number of decks you're going to have in the system. And the reason for that is uh, because we have so many decks, uh, we needed lots of height in here. And to try to make sure that the drop height from where the cards come out uh, never change, depending upon, regardless of the number of decks, I put a uh, platform in here that rises up. Uh, the deck selection over here determines how high that uh, platform will rise. So let's uh, get it going and hopefully we'll get a uh, clean run. So again, the first thing you see is the platform rise up. And it starts to not fix. Yeah, not particularly fast. Um, I didn't use any gears or different size wheels to get this going. I wasn't in a particular hurry to get it spit out. I just want to make sure that it uh, didn't jam and didn't clog up. Every time uh, two cards spit out, the platform drops down approximately the thickness of two cards. There again, that always keeps the drop height from where the cards are ejecting to where they're landing the same. If uh, you go too far on that, the cards will want to flip over. And if you're too close on it, the cards want to jam with each other coming off. So far, so good. Again, we're just doing two decks for this particular trial. Part of the challenge of this, again, in, in addition to the height, was uh, when you have a hard shuffler being driven by a motor and a tire underneath the decks. Uh, the amount of weight or pressure on that wheel varies by the number of decks. So three decks are heavier than one deck, it puts more pressure on it and that creates some problems. If you put the motor on top and you hinge it so it's going through an arc as it goes through larger number of decks, uh, that radius forces it to change the contact point. Okay, you can see now that uh, it's got the left done, right done, and it's retracting the, uh, the platform back to the start position. And there's a loop in the program, so it comes right back around to where you make the deck selection. So successful run. Uh, I'll walk you through uh, some of the features of the card shuffler next. Okay, so I'm walking through some of the features of this uh, shuffler. Again, we've got it set up for multiple decks. Uh, one to two, three to four, five to six. Um, this is the receiving area for the right side of the deck. So you can see that the cards rest on this platform right in here. We'll throw a couple in there just to show you. Now, the motor drops on next, it runs on these four posts back here, and then there's a uh, gizmo that sits on here that only allows one card to come out at a time. For the most part, every once in a while, two might come out. But uh, the idea is everything rides along with the cards. Uh, we do have a touch probe sensor on either side, so that once the last card is shuffled out, the motor drops down on the sensor and tells uh, tells the program to stop shuffling from that side. Once both sides, it doesn't matter which happens first, once both sides run out of cards, uh, the platform retracts down to its starting position, which again, the height varies on the, the number of uh, decks you've programmed in. So the motor, uh, again, rides on those four posts and floats on top of the cards. Um, the card shufflers seem to work the best the closer you can get the tire patch to the outside of the cards. Um, in my particular setup, I couldn't get it out that far, so uh, we had to do a little fussing around in the program. But again, this motor will accommodate up to three, three decks of cards. 
the gizmo that sits on top of that uh, consists of a frame with a scraper blade, four posts that sit on top of the deck and allow this whole uh, device to rise or fall rather as cards get shuffled out. Um, the only non-Lego part in here is in this gap right here between these two pieces uh, on either side um, is a 3D printed spacer that's about 15 thousandths. Cards are about 11 thousandths thick. Um, we found if we kept it right at that thickness, it uh, tended to jam, so we went up to 15 thousandths, which seems to work pretty well. Again, we have uh, rails in here that keep the, the deck nice and straight and helps eject the cards in a straight pile. So this one also rides on these outside four rails. As you can see, it sits down on the cards, so it rides up and down with the, uh, with the number of decks that this decks are executed. So it consists of this wiper blade on the front. Again, because of that 15,000 spacer in here, allows one card to come off at a time. Uh, the idea here is to eject the card out beyond the two posts and then retract whatever came with it so that the card will tip up a little bit, hit the posts, and then gravity will pull it off. Uh, if you eject it too far, it can want to stand up on itself. And if you don't eject it far enough, it'll just keep going back and forth and never eject the card whatsoever. Um, the lift platform, I'll take a separate video of that. But we took a, uh, a scissor jack, brought it up. There's a uh, guide on the back here that keeps it running more or less straight uh, and also keeps it from tilting back and forth as the cards come up. And we put a uh, guide on the front of uh, the gizmo to provide a little bit of an angle for the drop and also a little bit here to keep cards from, from falling off. Um, so as we walk around, to the back. And here you can see the uh, construction a little bit better. And come around to the back. Uh, now you can see a little better, hopefully a little better image of this guide that goes up and down and tries to keep uh, the, the platform from tilting. That's being run by a single medium motor. Um, and again, we'll take that apart uh, a little bit later on. The, the key that I found this whole thing to get it working is this upper structure uh, up here has to be very square, very rigid. If it's racked at all, um, these pins don't line up with each other and that causes the motor and the uh, gizmo to jam as it slides up and down. So again, really important that this is all square and, uh, and very rigid. So I think that's about, well, let's throw some more cards on this side. So again, so you can see it from the top view. Uh, work. A little tricky to do with one hand, but... Um, so now the cards are in place, you can see uh, the motor comes down on top of, again, talking about these tires. I originally went with uh, some thinner tires that came with the uh, Mindstorm setup. But what I found is I really needed a, uh, uh, some width on the rubber to be able to get a good purchase on the cards to scoot them out. Uh, the smaller tires that I used originally, there was also quite a variation in diameter, so even if you had like three set up on either side, uh, it might be running just on one tire because the tire had a larger diameter to it. Here again is a cage uh, that we'll put on. It's a little goofy looking, but uh, it does the job. Again, a little tricky to do here one-handed, but there you can see uh, everything put together. Just to give you a sense of capacity or a better sense of capacity of the, the deck magazine, there's three decks in there right now. Um, you can see that the uh, motor and driving system drops on top of it. 
and the cage will uh, drop on top also. So again, the initial problem was if you're running one deck, each deck is about 5 eighths of an inch thick, so each deck you add on is another 5 eighths of an inch. This blade had to run along with that to be able to pick one off, and we also had to maintain the dropping distance. If the drop distance would have been fixed in three decks, it would have been up, you know, about an inch and an eighth higher, and the cards would have tended to want to flip as, as they came down or uh, jam with the decks coming in from the other side. I'm not going to run it through with six decks because it just would take too long, but uh, the machine functions just as well with uh, uh, two decks as six decks. And it doesn't really seem to matter whether new cards are old. If the cards are bent or have a tear in them or something, they'll of course tend to follow it up. But uh, if the cards are in good shape, regardless of age or wear, uh, they seem to go through very easily. This is uh, a little more detail on the scissor jack. Um, I think this was pretty much a key component into trying to uh, do multiple decks. Was again to, to fix that drop height uh, so that it always stayed the same distance from the uh, blade on the uh, card shuffling mechanism. I've uh, never built one of these before, it was kind of fun. You can see it's a little wobbly, and that's why we had to put the uh, guide in the back to keep it from uh, tipping around. So just a brief segment of seeing the scissor lift uh, working without any cards be able to shuffle. We've selected one of two decks, moves into position. The touch sensors both indicate that there aren't any cards there, so now it's doing a full retraction. So in the final segment, just wanted to give again a little bit of an overview so you can get an idea on how this thing was constructed. Uh, this was my first Technics project I ever did. Um, and it was, it was a lot of fun. Challenges, but a lot of fun. Uh, hopefully you can see how the motor was constructed here. What I keep referring to as a gizmo, but it's called the wiper blade. Uh, one thing I neglected to mention before is uh, this post in here allows you to set the angle for these uh, drop rails. So you can make it a sharper angle or a shallower angle uh, to find out what works best. I'll try to include as much information in the description as I can, but uh, again, a challenging but uh, really fun first project. Thank you. Thanks for watching.